proud to be sponsored by Diamond Bright, the car care products that have been keeping the furious fleet looking their best for a long time already. To find all you need to keep your car clean and protected, follow the link below to diamondbright.co.uk. Hello and welcome to Furious Driving and this is Hippo the Freelander, which arrived on the fleet a few months ago when I was selling Quentin the convertible. A friend wanted Quentin, had to get rid of the Freelander in a hurry. I said, let's do a partial swap. And I wound up with this thing, which very quickly became a family favorite because everyone loves a Freelander. It's hard not to like something as endearing looking as this. We used it an awful lot for a few weeks. I took it on a holiday to Devon. We did a lot of things with it. It was really good fun. I've planned to do a few off-road days, which haven't quite got around to it. But since I brought it up here a few weeks ago, I haven't really used it. It's been kind of out of sight, out of mind. Then I put it on Sawn because things like the Volvo have been out of use for too long. I needed to get those back on the road again. And then when I bought my new Mercedes, I needed a deposit because my old Mercedes turned out to be absolutely worthless being non Newles, and it turns out this number plate is worth quite a bit of money. So this is no longer an actual valid number plate on this car. I sold that to someone whose initials are FK, not someone who likes swearing at traffic. But it was easy money. So until I get a new number plate made up for this one, although I do have another plate on retention, which I'm thinking about putting on this car. So until I make that decision, I'm not gonna get any number plates made up. So it's still, well, I've got till the end of the month, because I'm not gonna unsawn it mid-month. So I've got, yeah, two or three weeks to make up my mind on that one. Anyway, so this is no longer Mm, yes, this is now just something 03, um, at least for now anyway. Right, but this is a film I started making months ago. And when I first got the car, in fact, one of the first times I drove it, I pulled out the window on the passenger side was misted up, so I put the window down and guess what? It wouldn't go up again. So first thing I had to do on this car was to change that passenger window, which I did in the dark. I think it might've been raining. And this is the footage of that. Right, so I was not planning on starting this job at this precise moment in time. I was thinking of doing it in a more orderly fashion when it was nice and, you know, daylight perhaps or something like that. However, as you may have seen in the fixing half a dozen things in 10 minutes, little bits of trim, uh, I've wound up having this door regulator break during that video. So now I've been forced into doing this bit of this video halfway through doing that video. So we can take this door cut off so we can get to the regulator, change the regulator, which luckily I have got one uh, on standby. Then we can lower the glass properly, finish that job, and fix this job. That makes sense? Okay, so there's only a few screws that hold this thing in place. There's one here in the middle. There are two big ones underneath the door um, arm pull. There's one here, one here, and there's a screw in here, and a screw in here. And two underneath here, and then it's just clips, which click off with alarming severity. Have I done all of these now? I think I have. No, one more. Didn't think I'd done that one. I've got to say, these lights, these magnetic rechargeable lamps are absolutely amazing for this kind of work in the evening when you're forced into it. There is a link to these on the Amazon affiliate link in the uh, description below. And that's out, it's just not coming out. It's just stuck in there. Okay. Now this is the heart stopping bit where you have to basically lever the thing off. I'm using a big screwdriver because the trim clips, the trim remover tools I've got aren't quite long enough to get in there and force it off. Off it pops. Yeah, and off it comes. And because and because the window switch is in the center console, there's no wires to do on this one. Oh, that is previously broken. That's why that came off very easily just there. I wish I'd taken a clip off the other car. And also the plastic trim is missing, which means someone has been in this door previously, which might explain A, why the window doesn't work and B, why the speaker doesn't work either. So what you have to do is lower the glass down about halfway. Luckily it's where it's jammed. So you can see these two bolts here, which <coughs> hold the clamps from the window regulator to the glass. Then once that's freed off, you can then undo one, two, three, four, five, I think it is, bolts there. And then you need to hold the glass up with a bit of tape or jam something in the window there to stop it coming down and taking your fingers off and then lift the regulator out. Easy as that, simple five minutes work. A doddle, watch me mess it up. These do undo relatively easily. I'll do these now, first of all, just because I can. I'm trying quite hard not to lose all these bolts because they will come in handy when it comes to putting the car back together. 
mm, I have roughly no confidence in this tape holding it. So what I'll do is I'll wedge a screwdriver in there as well. And that acts as kind of a brake on it too. Next, all 10 millimeter bolts, whoops. 10 millimeter bolt, no, that's the wrong size. I am curious as to what, when this door was open previously, whether this is not the first time this window regulator has been changed. Right, that's free. And this is, whoops. Now this is the slightly tricky bit of actually maneuvering it out of the door. Yuck, all greasy. Oh, you caught, I was caught on the door handle. So I think this bit comes out first. I hope that wasn't important. Caught on more wires inside here. There we go. Interesting, when I took the one out of the other car, there were no wire snags at all. It just came straight out. Oh my word. Right, so that is the broken loom. Not loom, sorry, the broken window switch. I just want to plug this in and see what happens when I connect it up. Oh, never mind, I see what the problem is. Twangly, twangly, rusty, at the, whoops, rusty at that end, rusty cable there, and the whole lot has just snapped and gone twangles. So, more for the scrap pile. Now I just need to work out how to finagle all this back in again in a non-broken fashion. I am very curious about these big bunches of wires though, because when it came out the other car, I didn't have all these snaking bunches of wires everywhere that were snagging on everything. So this is the shiny new one that came out of the other Freelander, um, which looks significantly better. The wire is not exposed, it's inside, it's like plastic sheathingy stuff. Um, we've actually got rubber grips on there, which one of those was missing on the other one of these, and it all looks a lot cleaner and a lot nicer. So um, yeah, I think, Looking at the interior of this door, ooh, bits of uh, broken wire. Just fishing various bits of stuff out of this door. I think this window regulator has broken previously and because the bottom of this door actually isn't rusty at all, I reckon it had a replacement regulator from an older or rustier worse car, which has then failed a second time. So that's why I'm having to do it all over again. Right, let's try and get this thing into there without making this one break as well. I'm sure there's a correct order for doing this and I'm sure I'm going to get it wrong. Because mm, that needs to be basically like that once it's all done. Well that bit's easy. Mm, no, maybe not. There we go. Ah. Well, that was about 4,000 times easier than I thought it would be. It's not lined up perfectly, but it's in the ballpark. Right. Oh, it's magnetised itself to the back of the speaker. <laughs> I've got myself stuck. Okay, but the speaker's coming out. I'm very curious why these speakers don't work as well. There we go. Don't get stuck on there. Insides of car doors are so full of things for stuff to get stuck on, it's not even remotely funny. So where was that bolted? That was bolted about there, wasn't it? There we go, okay, yeah, one in. Once they start going in, you can all just find their positions naturally and easily, or maybe not. Let's try and get everything lined up and done up loosely before I bolt it all in place. Okay, number three goes there, but I need to bolt it to that bit first. Now these ones go there and there and there. Ah, oh, phew. Okay, that's good news. Whey! Don't go missing. Ooh, the broken trim clue. That might be from a mirror. Cool. Now I'll do this up by hand rather than by machine in case this is wrong and I'm 
putting force in the wrong place. One thing I can't do is figure out where to plug the wire in. Oh, there it is on the bottom. <laughs> should have done that when it was half out the door. And it should all just snap together. There's only four ways around it can go. <laughs> and it will naturally be the fourth way. Done it. Okay, now before I do anything else. Okay, no, we're good. We've even got this in the right place by chance. So now we can undo our super safe glass retention system. And lower this gently into the door. This is where an assistant will be so handy. And what we could do, uh, we go just drop that into the clamp holes. Which sounds like something from Futurama. And I'm lining up the dirt marks on the glass. Yeah, just dirt it up loosely at first, and then I can go back, wind it up to the top, make sure it's in the right place, and drop it down and tighten it all up. So we've got the two glass clamps done up, not too tightly, so as the glass goes up it can move a little bit, but it's fairly tight. More than finger tight, but not too tight. The five bolts are in the door, holding the mechanism in place. That was remarkably easy. Now let's do a quick test, it actually works. Wrong window. Yeah. Looks good. Let's wind it down and clamp it. You're not actually clamping through the glass, you've got a bracket either side of it which holds it tightly in place and moves up and down on the runners. There we go. I can't believe something as complicated as changing a window mechanism it was so much easier than changing something as simple as a drop link. Good, okay, so that's the front window changed. Now I'll get back to doing the original video I started earlier today. I'll see you in this video in the daylight when I'm doing the back door. Well, that's really good. So we now have functioning windows on both sides of the car. Fantastic, there is a second problem though, which is, in fact, there are two second problems. First second problem is that the rear doors don't unlock on the central locking. This is a common problem on Freelanders. I might do that today, I might not, because it's a bit of a pain. Second problem is that this rear door, I already knew wasn't quite fixed. Um, the fact it was held shut with gaffer tape when I was driving it home from picking it up suggested there might be an issue. So I do have, ah, let's walk all the way around the car again. I do have a new window winder mechanism for this car. I also have door lock mechanisms for both back doors because they both have that same problem. Whether I go into that today or not, I don't know because taking these out, uh, it was a scrap car that was going to be towed away for scrap and basically I mangled the doors getting them out because there's just no way of doing it. Anyway, we shall see. Uh, right, first of all, I am going to turn the car around even though I've started adding extra lighting in here. So a nice little strip light up there. Thank you much indeed to Matt for that one. Um, in fact, that wasn't the one Matt gave me, that was that one. I've got several strip lights, so I'm going to put all the array around this corner to make this a nicer, lighter working area. It's still a bit dark, so I'm going to turn the car around. First thing to do is go to my little pouch of keys, so I'm being very organised. I haven't come here and forgotten a key yet. So, I am keeping all of these cars on trickle charge. Every few days I'm rotating the trickle charger around from one car to the next. So it has been the Rover, and it is the Mini, it was the Freelander and the Alpha the other day. So everything is constantly on trickle charge so that I can come in, turn the key and drive away, which is so, so relaxing. I don't want to repeat of the trying to leave Lundy episode. I actually also rescued a headlight, which I thought looked a bit clearer than the one on the car, but now I'm not convinced now seeing them side by side. And a battery tray, because my battery tray clamp is actually broken, but that's a captive nut and it's, that's the bit that's actually gone, it turns out. So I probably will change that at some point when I'm feeling brave or bored or both. Right, so uh, let's try and work out how the back door comes off because the front one was surprisingly easy to do considering it was dark and it was raining and it was pretty cold that night. I'm indoors, it's not raining, it's actually quite comfortable. I've even got a cup of tea handy. So how hard can this one be? Don't answer that. At least we have the advantage that if it does go hideously wrong today, I can just lock the barn up and walk away and not have to leave the car open to the elements overnight which is always good. So I've got a screw there. I can't see any other screws around here, so this is all gonna be pry off stuff. 
and screws in the back of the door handle. So three screws and some pry bars. Let's get cracking. I've managed to get quite a few tools over here, screwdrivers being one of them. Because I have not doubled up on literally everything I own, it's quite useful to have this big bag of stuff so I can tote things out. I seem to remember these being essential for taking... I seem to remember these being essential for taking this all apart. All right, so trim tools. All right, let's start with the easy stuff. Small screws. Even I can manage this one. It's quite nice because all the stuff over here is almost brand new. Some of it has never been used before, depending on what screws and things I've come across. So I've got more stuff at home. It's lovely to have it all fresh and shiny and new in my new nice workshop. It still feels like a new and nice workshop. Like mega careful doing this. Um, I actually bought a new set of pry tools at the Ford show yesterday. So I am very, 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 very aware that on the donor car, the door cards were already cracked because these appear to be quite hard, brittle plastic that does not respond well to being yanked around. Although it's a lovely hot day today, so I felt plastic shards land on me then, something broke. Ooh. Are we there? Are we there? Yeah, we're there. Hooray! Nothing broke. Don't think. No, that'll be good. Amazing. Now this is actually quite grubby here. I haven't got running water up here at the barn, so what I might do is before I put this back on, I'll take this home and I'll get the foamy fabric cleaner and give us a good old sponge to make this nice and clean because there's some pretty manky arm rest gunge on there to make it a bit prettier. Oh, it's almost a shame to take this plastic off. It's never been, been touched previously. It's all like spotlessly brand new and glued to the door. Oh, let's start off with taking the speaker out. That always gives you a bit more clearance. We have clearance over. That's Clarence over. What? Got basically glued to the Panel, wow, okay, that's a new one. The plastic must have been like hot when the speaker was inserted and it's glued itself in, or is it actually glued from the factory? Okay, that's an easy thing removed. Now, we need to get to this bit here. I don't want to break that plastic, it's so lovely, but I'm gonna to have to. So that will sit like that in the door there. So I've got one screw just there, which I can see. One screw just there, I can see. Oh, another one just there. Is that it? Yeah, I think that's it. What could possibly go wrong? Ha, ah, I did find the magnetic tray. I thought I had one over here. Also, I found a torchy light thing so it makes life a bit easier to see what I'm doing. All right, so this is a 10 millimeter, not a 12 millimeter. This is Probably overkill, the uh, size of impact driver to get these out, but you know, makes short work of it. All right, that's now loose. And how the hell does it come out is the question. The window held tight with pegs and gaffer tape. I think I might need some new uh, window tint on this side. I didn't really like the brown tint anyway. I was thinking black tint to look a lot nicer in this car. Well, the feeling this needs to be lowered, doesn't it? I'm not sure it's going to do that. Ah, oh, it's taped there as well. God, there's so much tape on this window. There we go, that's why it wouldn't move down. Right, I've had a bit of a, a rummage around inside this door and uh, basically the glass is bolted on to this bracket, which is currently about there on this particular mechanism and it's another, I'm guessing, 10 millimeter bolt. Um, if you get your hand in there, you can just about find it by touch. It's not the easiest thing in the world by a long way. So see if I can get a small socket or a spanner in there. Now I have to say that a view with the mobile phone pointing through there made it look an awful lot more accessible than it actually is. Painful on my arm, it's like slicing a guillotine out. 
Okay, so that is now free. That's amazingly so sticky with gunk that's going nowhere. There we go. Now we got you. Now I must get these things muddled up. Right, so that one. Goodbye. More for the scrap pile. In the bin, as a certain Australian TV show says. Now, can I, while this is out, get this thing out? The problem is, those little hooky fellas that go into the back of it. So that one goes that. Oh, dang, I'm wishing. Hang about, hang about. Yeah, that one goes that side. So there are two rods that go into the back of that. It's how easily can I detach them and reattach them, determines whether or not I can get this thing in and out or not. And it doesn't look terribly difficult, which is famous last words. So I'm trying to get those two thick wire cutting things out of those two green nubbins and then put them back in again, which is the tricky bit. Getting them the right around as well. All right, so I've managed to pop one out. Oh no, I put it halfway, but not all the way out. So I can just pop it out there, but then it doesn't go any further, okay. So the one that's all, oh, hang on, there's another thing into it as well. There's a third thing into it, which is a wire which goes into there. I'm definitely going to regret this. Okay, that one comes out easy. That one comes out easy. Then I've got those to undo. I can see this ending up as being one of those things like, hey, do you remember that time you completely disabled the uh, back door of your Freelander and it doesn't work anymore? Oh yeah, I remember that day, that was fun. Before I do this, I'm going to bulldog these. Because this stuff makes life so much easier. And the donor car, a couple of these were really, really unpleasantly tight. Make a cup of tea while it does its work. Okay, so although I have got the big mega impact wrench recently, I'm going to go in by hand at first because these are really badly tight and I don't want to force them out. It's quite loose actually. <laughs> Having said all that, and I did actually buy this rail of Torx thingies from Draper um, in order to specifically to work on the Freelander because so much of the car is held together by Torx headed screws and bolts. And as I say every single time, all the tools I'm using are available on the Amazon affiliate store. If you click on that Amazon link, and if you don't buy anything from me, if I happen to buy something from someone else on Amazon, it does help to keep this channel going by feeding small amounts of cash back into the coffers so we can buy bits like that. Right, so that is now free. Oh, I wish I wasn't doing this. I wish I'd left this completely alone. Oh, I know. Oh, no, no, I don't know. So the button is free. The button has come out. Oh, that's free now. And it's just now. Oops, that's caught on something else. Caught on the cable. Okay, right, so can I wheedle this thing out of there? Ow, 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 ow. Oh, wait a minute, that's nearly out. Bloody hell. That's a thousand times easier than previous. Why is it so hard getting out of the donor cars one? Okay, that one also in the bin. So that has a little hook in there. That has a little hook on the end. The two go together, like something in a song probably. Ah, oh, come on you so-and-so, click in there, that's it. Be nice to me, that's good. And then that clicks into there, that snaps over that and that is done. Now before I get too carried away with this thing. This foam is actually kind of disintegrating now. I'm just going to pop the locks just to make sure that does something or makes a noise at the very least. That sounds like something's happening. I'm gonna call that prob probably fixed. Right, so now I just need to wheedle this back in there and then reconnect everything. Oh, okay, that was um, 
far easier than I expected. Now the tricky bit is now going to be reconnecting those little hooks and badges. Right, okay, that is lined up okay, not bolted in properly, but the little latchy wire things are virtually in the right place already. Oh my word, one looked in already. Let's drop this one in as well. This is what I was really worried about, is reconnecting these things. Mm, okay, that one has proven more tricky than I expected. Well, as tricky as I expected, I should say. I'm trying to do this all by touch and from memory of where everything is. Not as easy as it might sound. It doesn't sound that easy. Oh, in that, nearly, nearly. Well, it's only the button. The button's not massively essential, is it? Just for locking it from the inside. And central locking takes care of that. Just have that little thing there to do. I'm gonna try and figure out one more go at this before I give up entirely. That's it, we're in. Okay, now let's see if this, oh, I'll reconnect it. Let's see if this does anything or not. I can hear stuff working. Can't tell if it's doing anything or not. I won't shut it just yet. I was finished in the window first. Right, okay, so I'm gonna call that a borderline success. There's one tiny issue and that is that this bottom screw hole is dead headed. There's a broken screw in it, so I'm gonna have to drill that out and, uh, and then put the bolt in or screw in. Probably not today, because I haven't got any metal screws here that'll, that'll dig into that, but I'll come back to that one next time I've got the car at home and I've got some steel HSS drill bits. I'll drill that one out and then put a proper screw in that one, but two will hold it fine for now. I'm trying to weedle this thing in here. Oh, okay, that's going relatively easily. I think it's probably gonna be easier to put the uh, frame in first and then connect the window. At least I'm working on a static rather than a moving platform. Okay, right, so now then, the fun, the real fun, is trying to get everything to position where it can be bolted back together. Just had a minor panic moment where this came off the, uh, the wire. I had to look at it for a second without no frame of reference and work out how it all clipped back together. Phew, that was a bit of a, a panicky moment then. Okay, this is why it's so good to take photos or video when you're working on stuff. So the order it goes into is from the outer skin, you've got the plastic of the bottom of the window, then you've got the metal of the bit that goes on the runner, then the bolt goes in from this side. Which is so easy to do. Oh. Oh. oh, I need tea. Look at the state of my arm. I'm gonna look like I've been self-harming all week now, isn't it? Okay, right, done. Let's connect this thing up and see if it works. I'm a little nervous here. Finally, it's back in again and connected up and everything. So let's reconnect the window, power. Oh, marvelous. Oh, I've had enough of this game. Why aren't you going up and down, you son of a... Well, that's really bad, okay. Oh, it's just shredding itself inside the door. That's really good. Excellent. Okay. I'm happy with that. Let's disconnect that again. Okay. Let's take it all out again. Right. So what seems to have happened is this plastic clippy thing at the top, which guides it, uh, guides the cable around, seems to have come detached somehow. Unfortunately, the one that came off the car is exactly the same. So can't really tell if that was oh, how it's meant to fix on. Okay, that clips like that. Right, okay. Fits into that guide just there. And the whole lot feels really grindy and like it's not wrappy at all. So I think what I've got here is a slightly not happy replacement part. Right, so let's show you this thing working one more time. The cable is just looping all over the place over there. It keeps jumping out of, it keeps jumping out of there. It's tangled underneath there. What I'm thinking 
is that this replacement part has got its own issues and probably wasn't long for this world on the car it came out of. So although it was working as a working donor, it's not doing everything it should. The fact it's broken off at the top there, the cable is a bit rusty as well, suggests this is not going to work. So I'm gonna have to leave this door unfinished because of that. I'm sure I'm gonna regret this, but let's shut this door and see if it locks and unlocks. First of all, door does open. Second of all, door does lock. Third of all, door unlocks. Okay, so the, probably the most important thing, which is the fact the door opens and closes properly, is now complete. So I'm happy with that one. I thought I got a fix on this one. It nearly worked, but this is actually a defective replacement. So back to the old drawing board on that. So out of three jobs we've done, we've changed the front driver's window, we've changed this back lock, we've failed to drive that. We've done 66% success rate, which yeah, is good in anyone's book, frankly. I don't think we can really say better than that. So, right. <sighs> Thank you for watching this. I can't go any further today with fixing this because that is banjaxed. I do have another door lock for the other door, which now I know how easy it is to take out. I will actually go and endeavor to, to sort out because I've put this off for so long because I thought it was going to be an absolute nightmare, but that actually wasn't too hard. It was easier than the window mechanism. Anyway, if you've enjoyed, as always, please like and subscribe. You know the drill. And um, yeah, join me again next time. I'll be working on who knows what car. I don't know, probably maybe this one again. Maybe the Mini. The Mini needs a service. The Alpha's got a few problems again because it's an Alpha. The Rover Tomcat's got lots to do. Maybe I'll do a video of what's wrong with everything soon again. If the sun goes in for more than a few minutes, I will start to tackle the Mercedes W123, but it is an oven on my drive right now. Okay, right, I'm gonna go wash my hands and then uh, get some lunch. Right, see you all later. Mm-hmm. <laughs>